assigned task. Please do not interfere. I won't. Please wait. Alright. So today, we are gonna go through the skills in the game. All of them. And yeah, so let's get started. Let's go all the way over to physical. First stat here, boxing. Let's click on it. Rank 1. Unarmed attacks do 25% more damage. And as you can see, as you go down the list and read them on your own, it provides different bonuses as you rank it up. And I'm not exactly sure how to upgrade that one. Probably just boxing people, fighting people. So on to fitness. You have 30% more, or you have 10% more oxygen, and then as the levels you go up, you gain more. And then the final rank usually does something different on all of these. It's gonna, spreading a power tax, use significantly less oxygen. Which, that's crucial. Next we have stealth. At the stealth meter, you are 25% more difficult to detect when sneaking. Suppressed weapons do an additional 5% sneak damage, and then so forth. All the way down to the final bonus one there. You are 100% more difficult to detect when sneaking. And you have the chameleon already unlocked, which makes you go completely invisible, which is absolutely crazy. Now on to weightlifting. It's pretty self-explanatory, just increases your total carrying capacity. Wellness, increase your maximum health, which in my opinion is not too too crazy useful. I just got it because I thought it, it was one of my first max skills. I thought it had more uh, value than it does. But pain tolerance, as you can see, I have none of these. I, I don't have really many in physical, so I can't really speak for experience on those ones, but pain hurts, but only if you're not strong enough to take it. Physical damage is reduced by this with this skill. I'm not exactly sure. You might just need to get, get physically punched to train that stat. I'm not really sure. I don't have it. Uh, nutrition, food and drinks are 10%, 20%, 30%, and 50% more effective. I'd say that's pretty crucial if you're actually having trouble fighting, but the fighting's pretty easy in this game no matter what difficulty you're on. Uh, gymnastics, unlock the ability to combat slide. See, these ones, this could be useful. I haven't even really dug into it too much. But combat slide, move faster in 0G, become more stable when firing in 0G. Increased jump height. Pretty pretty cool. Now environmental conditions. Gain ten percent or ten resistance to airborne, thermal, corrosive and radiation, and then reduce the chance to gain an affliction from environmental damage sources on their own. So that's pretty good. Energy weapon dissipation. This is if you're getting lit up by energy weapons. I honestly don't really see a point for it unless you're again having a lot of trouble in the fights and you got extra skill points to spend. Alrighty, cellular regeneration. Slightly increased chance to recover from injuries naturally. Moderate increased chance to recover from injuries naturally. So it's just a slight in chance as you go up in uh, chance to recover from injuries, injuries naturally. Decontamination, just uh, for infections, and like yeah just infections from being outside and stuff you can cure those with a higher infection or decontamination level martial arts 15 percent increased chance to crit with a melee or unarmed attack so just it's all really there most categories here are very similar to the previous skill or to their other three ranks in the in the skill concealment here this one's crucial it actually adds damage to your sneak attacks. So as you see here at the last one, 10% normal damage. And, uh, or sorry, for melee normal damage. So if you're squatting and sneak up behind someone and hit them, you, do, you can do 10 times more damage. And then with a regular weapon, you can do four times more damage, which is, is crazy good too. Uh, Neuro Strikes, chance to stun an enemy. NPC with an unarmed attack. Again, a fighting skill. I really don't think it's necessary, but it, it might be pretty good to spend once you have a lot of extra throwaway points. And rejuvenation is huge. Regenerate health more quickly outside of combat. And then these ones, e even when you're in combat, you can regain, opposed to the first two levels. So that one actually makes a huge difference at the end there. Now on to social. Social, we've got commerce. I'm sure you're 
familiar with. Buy 20% less, sell for more. You buy basically just buy less, sell more. It's not a huge difference, I would say, unless the object's really expensive. Gastronomy, you can research and craft food from the skill at your crafting table in your outpost. If you're interested in learning about that, I have a video. All right, persuasion. When you get into dialogue with other, like with NPCs in the game, it, you're gonna sometimes get a persuasion category and this increases your chance of fully persuading people easier. Scavenging, just more loot, different types of loot in your, uh, in the chest you find. Just more common to find stuff. Self-explanatory. Theft, this helps with uh, pickpocketing. I didn't even, I've never even pickpocketed someone in this game, to be honest, so it's not really my thing, but I'm sure people are having a field day with that one. Deception, this is for space fights. The final one is ships 50% stronger will automatically surrender to piracy demands. Enemy contraband scans are 50% less expect, uh, effective. So that's pretty cool if you're really into space battles and stealing stuff from places. I'm not really much of a contraband guy. I just do resources and stuff. Diplomacy. This one seems kind of weird to me always. You could just force an NPC to just stop fighting in the middle of the fight for a while. You just uh, confuse them, I guess. I suppose you just confuse them. Intimidation. You can. For this is pretty much the same thing, but you get them to run away. This one is a substantial amount of, t of time. I can't imagine how long that would be. Probably like a full minute they just run away from you. It can be good in fighting to save your, your life. Now isolation, if you don't have any companions con uh, consistently following you around, this one's huge. You can do plus 40% weapon damage and gain 60 resistance for each spacesuit and helmet equipped. And I'll actually show that at the end of the video. How, uh, well actually I'm right next to a companion I believe, so my it's not going to be bonus isn't going to be kicked in, but yeah, my you can really significantly boost your defense stats and your health. Negotiation. Bribery. It's uh, another thing like persuasion. It's going to be in dialogue, but um, I haven't dappied in it. But it has, you know, bribery won't cost any money is the final phase in that, which I'm, I'm assuming is good if you're in bribing people. Because it's super easy to get credits in this game, so might as well bribe people and not have to deal with the other scenario if you don't want to. Instigation. You can force a target NPC at or below your level to attack their allies for a limited time. See, this one might be pretty good and funny at the same time. Enemies affected by instigation will attack their allies until they're dead. To start a full-on self, self war with that community there. Now, leadership. This is for your companions if you do work with companions. Um, you see the final one here is doubles the bonuses of combat and physical skills on companions. Companions have a chance to pick themselves up from a down state. I've noticed that my companions, when I do use them, don't really go down that often in fights, but I suppose that would be good if, if, it, if they had that. Outpost management, I level 4, I use this one. Um, you can read the things on the right. Additional robots, additional crew, outpost, or cargo links, outpost extractors produce twice as fast. That's basically why I got it, because you can mass produce a serious amount of resources with that. Manipulation. I guess you can give some people, you can give NPCs commands like a dog and make them do whatever you want. It's pretty cool. Ship command. This is good for your crew members on the ship. It doesn't actually say that it's for the ship specifically, but it's called ship command. So I'm going to assume that these crew members are only for your ship. Now finally, last but not least, Xenosociology. And this is basically the stop fighting perk again, but for aliens. Like alien monsters, so probably the majority of the monsters in the game. Alright, now on to combat. I've got a couple in here, these ones are all pretty good. Depending on what you're using, they're all crucial. You're gonna want at least, I'd say probably two or three in this category alone. For a, a for sure build. Alright. Start with ballistics. So any gun that doesn't shoot lasers, energy, or melee is a ballistic gun. Like basically a, yeah, just a bullet. It shoots a bullet. And the max one here does range by 30%, but the third one is what, what you're really going to want if you're using ballistics, like I am. 
30% more damage, which is huge based off the damage in this game. It's kind of low, so you can add like a good deal. Dueling, same thing, but their fi the final rank in that is melee kills heal you 10% of your health. That's actually pretty cool. Lasers, same as ballistics, but for lasers. And then their max rank is a little different too. 5% chance to set a target on fire. Pistol certification, same thing. This is all going to be the same for all different types of weapons here. Their rank 4 will do a little different for each one, I think. Like shotgun, same thing, up to rank 3, damage. And then it does shotguns kill grant, a small chance to stun targets. There's, there's different things for each one. Alright, now on to demolitions, same thing. But the last two ranks are different. Third is reduces damage. Fourth is all previous bonuses are doubled. Which is pretty cool, so... That'd be 50% and that'd be 50%. So you'd have some really strong grenades on you or grenade launchers. The grenade launchers do do a great bit of damage. Heavy weapons do 10% more damage. I guess this would be also go under grenade launchers. So you could actually... It seems like you could really amp up a, a grenade launcher here and get quite the... Quite the bang device. And then 50, 25% of physical resistance while aiming down sights. So if you're in tanky mo tank mode, just aim down the sights and <laughs> you'll be you'll be a tank. Inca incapacitation. This is for EM weapons, which I don't really do. They're for robots. And on ships, they're lame. So I figured on the ground, they'd be lame as well. So, but... That's pretty cool. EM weapons have a 50% chance to do 300% EM damage. That's pretty insane. I might have to investigate that. Particle beams. Same thing as ballistics and shotguns and pistols, but for particle beams. So I actually... Particle beam weapons are really good. These are the ones on the ground, not like in your ship. Like, you're, you can wield them. And as you can see, I have it uh, pretty much max to my liking which is 30 percent more damage i don't really worry about the critical hit chance because uh, honestly you know, how long are you paying attention to get a crit where you get a critical hit i mean it can help don't get me wrong but it's not my first priority now this one this one is why i chose ballistics because you can have this on top of that because i use a uh, a rifle which this does 30 percent more damage for rifles the rank four i'm not really worried about it's just the reloading speed um now, one that goes huge with that is sniper certification. We'll get to that. So, targeting here, increased accuracy and range when shooting without aiming, marks up to one enemy within 25 meters that damages you. Pretty cool. And you can see the other ranks here if you're interested. You can stop and read them. And now, on to sniper certification. So, this one's huge. Um, it's only huge if you get to rank 4, though, which the scoped weapons do 50% more damage while using the scope. That on top of ballistics, on top of rifling, and you can even use scopes on particle rifles, so you can put some serious damage down on, on NPCs with that. So that's why it's crucial to have that, at least for one or two guns, to have a scope on it. Rapid reloading, rapid ballistic weapons reload 30% faster. This one's all for reloading. And I'm basically just showing you guys this video because if you don't have a certain amount of perk uh, skills bought in a category, you can't even view this stuff. So I'm just lucky enough to be level 115 and I've spent quite a few points, so I have a lot open here. So increased critical hit chance with non-automatic range weapons by 3%, so I don't even know what they mean by range weapons. I guess there's like a bow or something. I don't even think I've something with bow, it's just tripping. Um, this one is armor penetration. Attack ignores 15% of a target's armor, and enemy armor is decreased by 25% for 6 seconds after a critical. See, with the other perks that I mentioned in the combat, if you get a critical hit, you're not going to need that 6 seconds. They're going to be dead. So I don't find that one useful for me, personally. So next we have crippling. Human enemies have a 30% in This is basically the same as the alien one, and the same as the robot one, but for, for humans. So... You can read these over if you're interested. Uh, sharpshooting. This looks like it's going to be all critical damage, if I remember. Yep, all critical damage. Which, if you're, like, if you know how to get a critical hit every time, I'm not sure if there's, like, a formula to it, but I don't I don't think there is. If you're getting critical hits every time, though, this all these critical hit ones I mentioned are for you, for sure. So, go ahead, check those out. 
Now on to science, my favorite category. As you can see, I have at least got one point in each of these categories. So let's start with astrodynamics. This is all for grav jumping. It all benefits your grav jump on your spaceship. So you can, if you're interested in that. Geology, this has to do with resources, all types of resources in the game. Um, just, well, basically just inorganic and organic and how you can get extra things from them. I have just two ranks in there, one or two ranks. Medicine, this makes your things that you have heal harder. Not to be confused with the one that was for food. This is for specifics, med packs and stuff. Research methods. It's, uh, so when you craft in your outpost, things require resources to research. And this will drop the, uh, the, the research development prices of resources significantly. I wish I would have paid attention to that before I got everything. I've fully researched my research center, so that's useless to me now, really, but still useful if you haven't researched at all. Surveying, this is for when you're walking around. If you're an explorer like me, it's crucial. I need This is one of the skills I'm actually working on. You can actually scan from further away and uh, scan for less, scan things less times to fully uh, identify their properties. And if you're confused what that means, I have a video on that on my channel as well on uh, farming in the outpost guide and exploring. So on to the next, we got zoology, which is for animal husbandry. A lot of people don't even know that you can have animals in this game or farm animals or any anything really at the outpost. Some people don't even know about the outposts. Um, so basically to get this skill going, you just buy the points and then you'd have to go around in the wild picking up things from animals just to unlock the rank one. And then after that, you have full access to Animal Husbandry Centers. Weapon Engineering. This increases the rank and skill of weapons mods that you can add in the workbench in the outpost. Or you can even use a workbench in a, sh in a lab, on a mission, or uh, in your ship, you could have one as well. Spacesuit Design. It's the same thing as for weapons, but for spaceships. Or spacesuits, sorry. Spacesuits. Scanning. This is uh, for when you're flying around, jumping around and stuff in space in your ship with the grab jumps. You scan planets and basically once you get to level four, you see like a resource like Rothesite that has four stars or like uh, Dysprosium, two, three stars. And you originally you scan it and it's just gray on the map. You can't even see where the resource is. Once you get to four here, you can fully scan the planet and you can see every resource that it has to offer in that little list when you're scanning a planet. All right, so botany, I would suggest getting at least one so you can have a greenhouse at your outpost. You don't need these ones really, unless you're super into it, but with level one, you can pretty much get anything you need in the game farming was, to my knowledge at least. And I've been doing I, outposts on my specialty, so I, I would assume that's right, but I don't know. Astrophysics, you can scan the moons on your current planet. Um, and traits are like things you find on a planet, like uh, a degrading vine or like a moon, like a pointy rock design or something. It's, it's weird. You'll know what I'm talking about if you've encountered one. But when you when you run around, you find things like that, which are traits. And then you also find traits like, you know, they have fiery meteor storms every now and then. So that's, ast that's what you could uh, get from that. That's astrophysics. Anatronic Fusion, um, I never really got into it, I just bought one, I think, or I have the option to get ranked one here, but I never really worried about the power. I don't think that has anything, any benefit in fighting, just maybe a lot higher, uh, fi higher top speed, nothing about acceleration in my, my knowledge. Um, okay, I think I, yeah, I skipped... I skipped those ones, so we're gonna go up here again. Chemistry, same as the food uh, for research, but this is for ke uh, chemistry stuff. You can research um, like potions and stuff and uh, other stuff in your lab, in your pharmaceutical lab. All right, outpost engineering. This, uh, this skill is for, say you wanted to turn iron and aluminum into adaptive frames without actually clicking the button. You would have a fabricator at your base with both of those resources going into it, and you'd make it, those are modules. You use modules like that, and these improve those to make them top of the top of the line. All right, 
Planetary habitation. This is very crucial if you're going long term outposting. Um, you can build on any planet you want to with level four, but before that, you need to you need to go build on planets. You need to build a outpost on these planets to unlock the ability to build on more dangerous planets. If that makes sense, as you can see here, and you can get up to I think it's twenty four to thirty outposts. But you can always pick them up and put them somewhere else if you're not enjoying them. Special projects. This is uh, sort of crafting stuff after you're at your industrial workbench, like adaptive frames and stuff. But you can get like more unique stuff, like a D thimble, a thimble, um, a bunch of other stuff, like a wafer, a bunch of stuff. Now, finally, last but not least, we're on to tech, which, if you're not interested, it's mostly spaceship stuff. But there is some other stuff in here that. It's pretty, pretty useful, especially Kayla. So we got ballistic ship weapons, pretty self-explanatory. If you've looked at your ship at all, you know what the little three letters are for each of your weapons. So you know if you got ballistic, uh, EM, or uh, parabolic, or anything like that, you, you, you will know which one of these to upgrade for that. Or you can just do a little bit of uh, messing around in the ship builder, and it could... You could find these kind if you want. Boost pack training, I would get at least level one so you can fly around. It just makes the game more fun. That's basically that. Um, piloting, I got maxed out because I got in a little phase I went through where I just wanted to fight people. And so I went and did all the spaceship stats. As you can see, I have a bunch of them ranked up. But yeah, so this is to increase the level of the ship you can fly, essentially. And I guess your turning rate and maneuverability, which is clutch, I'd guess. I'd say, but mostly for rank four, so you can fly that that high level ship around. I would I would get that. All right, security. You can attempt to hack advanced locks and two auto attempts can be banked. This goes along with uh, pick uh, lock picking and stuff. I'm not very much into it. It's to me super difficult, but not really super difficult, but super tedious. So, but this is what everything does in there that you can upgrade. It seems like it probably is very useful if you're into that. All right, for this, this is targeting control systems. You need to at least get number one in, in order to take out people's engines in space without destroying their ship easier. I don't even know if you can take out ships engines without uh, target control systems one. So please get that if you're flying around, you're gonna need it. Shield systems. For the ship, this is crucial. I would do this right away. Uh, your sh shields will occasionally resist 100% of all damage. Crucial. Payloads, this increases your ship's cargo. Uh, I don't have it maxed yet, I'm at 3, but 50% more capacity at max. It's really good. My ship currently holds 14,000 ca uh, capacity. Uh, and it would go up to, uh, at this point, 20% more. So it'd be pretty insane with another, uh, actually, sorry, it's at 19,000 and it would go up to, um, probably like 23,000 if I were to get up to the final rank. It's pretty insane how much it helps. Engine systems, uh, this helps with all your engines factors, your speed too. Pretty helpful if you're into shipping. Energy weapon systems, same thing as the, uh, the, the um, ballistic weapon systems, but for energy weapons. Missile weapon systems, same thing, but for missile weapons. Particle beam, same thing, but for particle beam. Robotics, now this, um, I'm not too sure about this one, honestly. This is just for, okay, this is on the ground. This isn't in a spaceship. This is for fighting robots and turrets. I don't think this is huge, because if you're, you could do many other skills to kill robots faster, like the EM or whatever, but... No, I don't think this really matters unless you're you're just getting swamped by robots and you can't you can't deal with it anymore. All right, starship design. This is crucial for people, especially for people like me, people who love to build. So this allows the like to install better parts on your ship to make them stronger, faster, hold more storage, everything like that. I'm surprised I don't have it maxed out. It should be maxed out, but it's not. Yeah, I need to install 26 more parts, which can get pricey. It can get really pricey. Starship engineering. Um, all systems repair 10% faster. Ship systems 25 damage. 
So these are all good ones to have. I just don't have them because I don't, I don't really dab in space flight. So automated weapon systems. Uh, so to even use your automated weapon, like an automatic turret, you need to have level one unlocked. So if you have an automatic turret on your ship that's not working, it's because you don't have this. Boost assault training. That's what is kind of funny. You can damage people with your jetpack when you fly over them. It's just kind of funny to me. I honestly wouldn't waste points on it. Uh, this last maybe maybe to get to the last rank while hovering time slows down and the world moves seventy percent slower. I mean, that's crazy. EM weapon systems. I don't know why it's all the way down here at the end. Like it's super good or something. But I mean the four is cool. EM ships. Weapons have a small chance of instantly disabling enemy engines. That's not bad, but by the time you're usually targeting the engines, the ship's pretty much shot anyway. But, so yeah, I mean, that's been it for the video. That's all the skills. Now let's see if we can take a look at my armor here and uh, show y'all. Yeah, see? So on the right there, you can see my stats are super high for my armor because I'm using isolation. And then we're just looking to look at the weapons real quick. Stock. So right now we... Uh, Got a 1535 sniper, but if I um, were sneaking, it, it can hit like six or 7,000. And then I have this 233, 871, and then everything else is pretty basic, just decent weapons. But uh, that's about it, folks. I appreciate it.